one here on Loot Great Unboxing here on Pastiche of Skin. This one is Loot Great DX. Of course, the big body crate, the big massive heavy, oh, massive crate. Let's see what they've got inside of it for us this month in the month of October. Oh, oh actually cool. Isn't that recognizable for horror? That is actually John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> How do you like that? I like that. I like the referencing. So, what have we got inside? Let's grab with a piece of clothing and take a look out on the wine! How's it going guys? Nice to meet you. Thank you very much for watching. This is another unboxing here on Past T-Shirt Skin. Today we're looking at the Loot Crate DX. Loot Crate DX is... Uh, I, I've been having issues with it for the last couple of months. It's not been the most impressive of crates. Uh, I've been complaining about the fact that it seems a lot more childish than it should be. It doesn't feel like it's actually being marketed towards adults in any way, shape or form. It's it's disappointing. Um, I'm just I'm, I've just been disappointed in the content since the early crates. The small lead lined glasses, the whiskey stones, the uh, D20 ice cube holder. The, those little things worked for me. They felt like stuff that you would have in an adult house that happens to be geekery, not stuff that you would have in the house because your kids are geekery. You know, that's. That's where the line between is. I, I don't like the slight infantilization. I, I want the objects to actually feel much more homeware something that's much more that you would regularly use. And um, this piece of clothing, uh, well, I mean, I've got a special place in my heart for the Scream series. I actually do. I do. It's because every single one of them came out around by my birthday. It's the April times. I used to drag my friends to go and see these movies in the theaters whenever they came out. Even though they are garbage, they are really bad slasher movies, but they still hold a special place in my heart. But this, um, I like the design. I mean, obviously it's Scream, but with the ghost face on it and like done in a version. So it's a version of the Scream face with the ghost face. That's never been done before. <laughs> but it's more the fact that this is a hoodie. It's well, it's more. It's not even a hoodie. No, it's not. I might say a hoodie. It's a jumper, and I'm not a jumper kind of guy. I, I think the last time I wore a jumper was either in primary school, or what was it? I think I was actually in part of force in, uh, in school to wear a woolen jumper. I just I've never been a kind of like jumpery person because I'm a big guy and I don't feel cold most of the time. I can, I'm generally quite more of an issue like I'm overheating more than anything else. I mean, Christ, like I'm actually wearing two t-shirts now because I threw one on in a previous crit and I'm a little bit more sweltered than I need to be. So I will never ever wear this. My, my girlfriend's going to be delighted. She's probably going to wear this most of the winter because she is, of course, a horror fiend. Well, skull fiend and the monster theme, but this this isn't for me. This, this is obviously never going to be worn by me, but I can appreciate the print, the quality of the design on it. It actually like it looks impressive to me. It looks well done. I mean, it's not bad, and the quality of the jumper is reasonably high. I mean, I don't know. It's just just not for me. So yeah, scream face, ghost face, all branded for scream the movie. But uh, what, what, what are, they, are they ever going to bring back that series? Do you think they could actually like, redo, reboot the Scream franchise? I'd be interested to try it. I mean, as I said, you movies like Hush and other ones where there's actually people breaking into houses do that same ghost facey kind of character, the Michael Myers mask kind of thing, but they don't really do the, the same kind of like self-aware uh, genre humping that, say, Cabin in the Woods does, which is a love letter to every horror movie ever made in the woods. So, um, yeah, let's take a look to see what else is inside the crate. Okay, take a look at this. Of course, because our box has actually got the thing as a theme, we've got a thing in the thing. Do you like the thing in the thing? We said you've done just thingception, yeah? So, this is kind of cool. I like the design of this. Um, and the monster designs in the thing are stuff of nightmare legend. They, like, it's just the, the imagination that went into them and the preparation. I mean, little ideas like... Getting somebody who's actually got uh, uh, missing a limb to have prosthetics for the entire of the movie just so you can do a scene where you chop off his arm and you can do it looking more realistically because they never had the arm in the first place is the kind of horror lunacy which just makes those kind of movies look so good. You know, it's like the, it's the line between what is reality and what is actually fiction in the monster. And these, like the creature from the thing, oh man, just the the... The body horror that actually comes with them is amazing. I, 
I recommend going to see that. I recommend sitting back and re-watching the thing. A few friends of mine went and listened to the uh, this John Carpenter soundtracks. Like, they actually went to, like, an orchestrated evening of it. And, of course, like, one of the standout moments for them is actually the soundtrack to the thing. This is... I'm, I'm sure they would actually be envious of this figure. Except for the fact that I'm pretty sure that they already get these kind of crates or already buy these kind of figures. This is reasonably well sculpted. I mean, it's not amazing. It's a plastic statuette. But uh, like, it, it looks horrifying and nice at the same time. I'm looking forward to putting that up on the shelf, probably next to one of my Hardy figures and stuff, just because it's actually disgusting. I think this is actually, this deserves, this is the kind of figure that deserves to actually have like a wee pouch of uh, slime to go with it, if you really wanted to give it a nice glistening effect. But yeah, the thing. Good movie, good show. I'm just putting that back into the box. And that is of course taking too long. <laughs> Damn you for being awkwardly shaped. So, let's see what else is inside the crib. Ash vs. the Evil Dead. <laughs> I sat down with my girlfriend and watched Evil Dead 2 recently. Uh, she was perfectly fine going like, this isn't really that funny. This, or, this isn't really that horrifying. This is like, just kind of funny. Is it, like, how is this meant to be horror? And then it gets to the bit where he's actually like got his hands gone bad. And he pins it down to the table. And he's like, who's laughing now, huh? Who's laughing now? <laughs> and uh, slices off his own hand. Spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen Evil Dead 2 since it came out in 1986. But yeah, check it out. <laughs> There's a couple of friends of mine who actually like make um, cosplay figures and stuff. Uh, or not co make cosplay props. If I would love to actually see him, him try and like, make this look like the one that was attached to his fist for like one of the days he's actually doing cosplay. This is kind of cool. It's of course a um, power bank. It's a bit oversized as a power bank. It's a bit ridiculous as a power bank. I'm sure there must be, I'm assuming you can actually like take the power bank out of this, can you? No, nope. no, nope, this whole thing you have to carry around with you. <laughs> so for uh, people who actually carry around phone devices, tablet devices and whatever else, this is actually for uh, charging and then of course, then using to power up your devices. I would probably never ever use this one because of the fact that it's, I could snap, that blade will snap off so easily. So I'll probably never ever mess with it. Uh, probably never use it in its own way. But um, interesting touch. I mean, I whenever I first looked at it, I thought it said money bank. I was going like, oh, that'd be weird. So you actually put money into the body of the chainsaw. But this is tiny. How is it going to be any way big? But um, yeah, a power bank makes sense. I mean, if they made this as actually like, if this was like a stupid, like, if they went and did something ridiculous, like made this a card reader. So it actually had like on this side slots. So you could actually have an NMC, an SD card, or whatever else, like just do the typical card sides, that slide them all in there, and then just had a USB port connected to the cable, of course, that comes with it, and then use it as a card reader. This would actually be more functional to me than a power bank, but um, as a power bank, I suppose, I mean, what, what, what can you complain about? I mean, everybody's looking for power banks for playing Pokemon Go. I mean, if you're walking around the park with this at night, attached to your phone, I think you're probably uh, getting a few more people actually kind of like stopping you in the streets. <laughs> like I'm modeling my chainsaw, you know, it's nice. Nice. So yeah, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Great TV series. Uh, continuation of the Evil Dead franchise. Bruce Campbell continuing to work is always good news to me. <laughs> so anything that keeps him in whiskey and hookers keeps me a happy man. <laughs> it's a, I'm actually honestly saying it's a, it's a funny series. If you're a fan of any of the Evil Dead films, you've ever seen any of them, it's highly recommended. Uh, of course, there's uh, two seasons of it now, isn't there? Is it, have they finished a second season and on to a third? No, I think there's only two seasons. The second season is currently ongoing. So I recommend checking it out. Uh, you can It's on Stars, but I'm pretty sure... Um, did Amazon get the rights to it for Amazon Prime? I don't know too sure. I need to check that up because I'm trying to wonder, like... I've seen episodes of season one over at my girlfriend's place, but I haven't seen it. I haven't watched it myself at home. So I need to find out if I have access to being able to watch the rest of the episodes. So, um, yeah. Let's see what else is inside the crate. Warning! Coffee-dwelling zombie mug inside. Obviously, it does exactly what it says on the tin, I assume. In that case, if there isn't a coffee-dwelling zombie inside this, then I'm going to be heavily, heavily perturbed and uh, probably upset with their false advertising. No, that's exactly what it is. That's cool. All right, so this is actually probably the first piece of Walking Dead merchandise that they've gotten right so far. So yeah, look at that. Design on the outside, zombies, 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 The Walking Dead. Uh, did everybody watch the opening of the season? Have they everybody seen Negan? Yeah? Yeah? Can we stop worrying about spoilers now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ben's had far too many chances as it is. 
But um, yeah, check that out. There's actually a zombie inside the cup. Look at him. He's creepy. <laughs> so that's actually kind of weird. So you're actually holding your cup and then you're actually drinking your coffee and his head pops up out of the rim. Yeah, that's, that's perturbing. Although it does affect how much coffee you can put in the mug, which is annoying. But I'd like to find out what the volume of this is without the... Um, the hey, well, I wanted to find out what the volume of this is without the zombie in it. Because I know some people who would actually like literally go snap the thing around because they want more coffee. They are horrible, mean people. Um, hand wash only, do not soak, and do not microwave. So that's a problem. If you can't make crockery and material prepared to kind of like take some beating, then that's annoying. I, I want to... I want to be able to use this easily. I don't want to have any limitations on my usage. But um, I like the print around the outside. It's obviously, is this actually, I thought it was actually printed on, but it actually feels like it's uh, kind of like uh, a textured into the actual uh, mug. So it won't peel off too easily. Uh, it looks horrifying. I love the faces on it. Um, I'm assuming these must be from models that they actually use rather than actually like extras or actors because they, that'd be terrifying. That actually have your face zombified forever on somebody's mug. And of course we do it on the inside. I like that. That's actually a nice touch. I probably wouldn't drink coffee out of it because I don't want to smack my teeth accidentally or my nose off of the zombie. But um, yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. So what else have we got inside the grid this month? We have an issue of Delirium. What's this? Delirium magazine. Oh, great. Okay, so it's, I'm assuming this is actually like a horror fanzine that is regularly out. So this is issue 12 of the magazine. And essentially, yeah, October, October November 12th, 12th, 12th terrifying issue. The 12th terrifying issue of Delirium by Full Moon Productions or Full Moon Presents. So it's like uh, interviews with the director of uh, Bronson, Neon Demon, a God Only God Forgives, Drive, uh, Camp Grindhouse, a bunch of Blu-ray advertisements, uh, mental health and horror, how people are actually being portrayed as crazy, um, Slugs, a movie I've never heard of. But I'll probably look up now that I've seen this. Oh, it actually lists all the things. Oh, so this is actually kind of cool because the 12th issue, there's a chance you're reading your magazine for the first time because you're a Loot Crate customer for Loot Crate's massive Halloween horror box. We've been invited to the party and we couldn't be more pleased. So they actually did an entire page talking about the loot content for uh, this month inside and this issue of Delirium because it got added for it. Oh, that's kind of cool. Horror Alligator, I actually like that. They do a movie poster as a centerfold so you can actually tear a page out and use it as a poster. That's about that. That's property retro, actually. Um, ba -ba -bum. Raven Wolf Towers. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stories in here. They're actually about alligators and monsters and monsters and alligators and all the other types of horror. Ooh, heavy metal they got a reference to as well. Haven't watched that in a long time. Oh, they're chatting about um, animated uh, movies that are actually like for 18 year olds, which is, um, if you haven't already, I mean, there's a history of like Fritz the Cat, heavy, uh, heavy metal. Uh, Stripperella, of course, anime from left, right, and center. Um, Archer kind of counts as that, I suppose, because of the amount of like sexiness that is involved in it. Uh, bam, more people, more actresses, more actors and actresses, and more interviews. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of cool stuff in here. I'm just um, I'm kind of scanning through quickly because obviously this I'm not going to sit and read an issue from back to cover. But uh, that looks like a pretty interesting. I like the look of Delirium. It reminds me a lot of the movie critic section of a Bizarre Magazine, which I used to read years ago. I've never been kind of one of those people for like Fangoria or Delirium Magazine. That's this one being called Delirium. To actually buy them and regularly read them. But I, whenever I get my hands on them, I was like, say for example, I was going on a long road trip and I had no other options to do stuff back in the day. I would have grabbed one of these kind of magazines because there would have been kind of stuff I could uh, filter through, like page after page of interviews. Um, okay, so the next thing in the crit is... Hellraiser button. Do, 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 do. Solve the puzzle cube and get murdered. Uh, Pinhead. Yeah. So, from Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Hellraiser series went a little bit weird, same as every other horror series in all creation. It got cheesy, weird, and awful at some point, but Pinhead's still fairly threatening. Some people do amazing Pinhead costumes. I don't know if I like the idea of having like metal sticking into my head. Um, obviously, they're probably like, rubber pins, but still... Unnerve me the idea of actually having a full head covering like that. The next thing we have in the crate is an art print, which I absolutely hate. I fucking can't stand getting art prints in these fucking crates. Please stop putting them in it. Loot Crate, stop. This is a cool movie. This is a cool piece of art. 
but I don't fucking want an art print. I don't want something that's printed out on cardstock and then put inside a plastic bag. I don't want this. I don't want to be spending money on these crates for that. That's not, uh, this, is the, this is the cheapest fucking thing you can put inside the crate. And it pisses me off every fucking time you do it. I love the artwork sometimes in them, but I don't care. So I'm never, ever going to do anything with these. If there was sign, if there were signatures on this kind of stuff, or it was something where it would, you framed it for me, but all you've done is set me a task to fucking put this away somewhere so it doesn't get damaged, and that's a pain in the fucking balls. So stop it. Sorry, I lost my shit there for a second. Demeanor returned. We're back. So what the fuck's inside this one this time? So of course, as always, they always have their high quality pamphlet of terror that they actually have with the loot crates every single time. So this one's of course horror. Beware, looters of Tintin in this box are some of the most diabolical, spine-tingling franchises in pop culture. Turn off all the lights and prepare yourselves for horror. Yeah. What have we got inside this one? Of course, it lists the John Carpenter's a thing statuette, the Walking Dead zombie mug, Scream fleece sweater, Evil Dead 2 variant art print, bonus Delirium magazine, Ash vs. Evil Dead chainsaw replica power bank, and what was in the Mega Crates? Let's take a look. Oh, the Mega Crate was an Apple 12 inch MacBook, 256 gigabyte, the Walking Dead Daryl's messenger bag, an NCCA Freddy vs. Jason playset, or statue set, Friday the 13th scarf, and Halloween the complete collection on Blu ray. Yeah, another uh, mega crate that was kind of awesome, but um, I, I'm not a Mac person, so I would have sold that MacBook as soon as it arrived and bought myself a PC in parts for like half the value of it and then spent the rest of the money on booze. Probably what I would have done if I had actually gotten one of those. Um, so yeah, that was the crate for Loot Crate DX for this month of October, November for the theme of horror. I'm, I'm underwhelmed. There's some of the nice stuff in there and this, the, the the biggest problem I have with the statuette is this. Do you recognize that? Do you recognize that? Do you recognize that? Do you recognize those fuckers right there? Yeah, I recognize that. This figure, as much as I actually like the movie, is not of brilliant quality. Chronicle don't... They, they, they don't seem to actually get the... They, they're mass produced for a purpose for being mass produced. But there's little seam marks and unmatching lines and poor quality in this fucking thing. And the last time I got some from them, it was shit as well. This is again in the Loot Crate DX box. They've fucking done it. So Chronicle, fuck off. The Loot Crate, stop going to Chronicle for figures. I'm sure you could have got dozens of other things for the thing. Christ, you could have got us a cheap copy of it on DVD and it would cost you less to produce than this. Why wouldn't you do that? Like, literally, as if you were left with absolutely nothing you could do. Why the fuck did we not get a DVD of the thing? I'm willing to bet there's plenty of people who have watched uh, her um, part of this crate and buy this stuff that may have never fucking seen the film. Uh. <sighs> okay. So, the power bank, never going to use it. But it looks kind of cool. The print. I've said enough words about that already. The only thing that really stands out to me as being awesome in this is actually the magazine, which is rare. And the mug, nice, but I probably will never ever drink out of that. I know somebody else that will, I know who I'm going to gift it to, but yeah. Look at DX guys, still have not got themselves back to the right spot. I. Don't know what's wrong. Well, like, I don't know why they, they might have one good object and the rest is trash. And the reason why is because they just don't give a shit. That's why. That's what I'm thinking. But of course, there will be a survey that comes around for me to fill in and tell them all this. And I will link them to this video so they can see it again. They can see my opinions. I will say them exactly to them again, as always. So we'll see what way it goes around for the next crate that will come by. So um, yeah, this has been... Luke Crit DX for the month of October, November. Horror spooky, spooky times. I hope you've all had a very good Halloween and I hope to see you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.